My name is Dr. David Amron. I'm the founder and medical director of the Roxbury Institute in Beverly Hills, California. The Roxbury Institute is a multi-specialty approach to not only aesthetics, but to health and disease treatment too, made up of numerous uh, specialists in different areas working together. You're going to hear one of them, Dr. Jamie Schwartz, talking about adjunct uh, procedures for lipedema patients. My own particular practice has been focused on complicated liposuction surgery for 22 years, and the last several years is dedicated to lipedema and Durkheim surgery also. Um, each year, I'm given the, the challenge of, uh, in my talk, of following uh, either uh, Herbst or Stutz, these masters of speaking, um, uh, with my talk. But this year, I was given a special challenge. I was, uh, was contacted by Cheyenne on this past Wednesday to speak about Durkheim's disease, which I accepted. Uh, so I very quickly that evening went back home and sat at my kitchen table at 9 p.m. at night putting together a talk on, on Durkheim's disease and liposuction. Uh, so there'll be no fancy slides, no fancy videos, just, um, just um, uh, so some information. But really, in, in all, in all uh, seriousness, it was a great way to learn about this disease and, and understand it more. I'm always impressed by those that have, have long lists of disclosures, but I have none. Maybe one day I'll have some disclosures to, to show you. So this, this you've seen before. Dr. Herbs talked extensively about Durkheim's disease and fat disorders, and these are the major fat disorders, which is uh, Durkheim's disease, uh, adiposis dolorosa, Madelung's disease, familial multiple lipomatosis, and finally, lipedema. Um, you know, I tell patients that uh, the first three diseases we learned about in medical school, and I come from a Durham background, we learned about this definitely in, in Durham residency and training, um, but not lipedema for, for no great reason. And I think it may be as simple as lipedema was given uh, not the best name. It sounds too much like lymphedema, and because of that, it was ignored. Anyway, Durkheim's disease, you heard a lot about this also, first described in 1888, a long time ago, by a neurologist, Francis Durkheim. Uh, unknown etiology still, is it autoimmune, is there a metabolic component? component? Uh, what is the genetic component of it? Uh, this, it it, it, it uh, has multiple subcutaneous nodules that vary in size and firmness. Uh, unknown cause of pain, um, whether it's the pressure on the nerves that's causing the pain, much more common in females, of course, and most commonly appears between 35 and 50 years of age. The treatment of Durkheim's disease, um, two words, definitely challenging and frustrating. Uh, a lot of things have been tried, analgesics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, steroids, either injections or systemically, IV lidocaine's been tried, interferon, methotrexate, calcium channel, channel modulators, hypobaric pressure, of course, surgical excision, liposuction, which we're gonna talk about, a uh, whole bunch of other um, uh, treatments like acupuncture, hypnosis, biofeedback, cognitive uh, behavioral therapy, and then Dr. Herbst mentioned some others, treating the fibrin clots and, and, and treating with TENS. Uh, review of literature on liposuction for Durkheim's disease. So as I, as I went through things and, and had it compiled, two things came out. It's, it's limited. Uh, even though this disease has been around a long time, there's not a lot of information about liposuction and Durkheim's, um, and it is also variable. This is a case report that goes back uh, many years to 1988, um, which is uh, uh, demonstrating the success of liposuction in one patient um, uh, for Durkheim's disease. Uh, this is a study of uh, over 100 patients uh, looking at the quality of life after liposuction with Durkheim's disease. And uh, the, the bottom line is it's variable. And they weren't very impressed with the fact that liposuction um, can actually improve Durkheim's disease. This, I thought, was another study, but on the plane on the way over here, I realized it's the same study in a different journal. <laughs> so the mechanism of pain relief following liposuction, well, we just really don't know. It's possibly reduced pressure on nerves by the emulsification extraction of lipomas. Possibly it's the interference or destruction of nerve plexuses in the adipose tissue itself. So my current approach to Durkheim's disease, you know, I, I, I'm looking at this slide and I realize, wow, I'm using four different pieces of, of machinery, four different gadgets. And, and, and years ago, I talked about all these gadgets. I didn't want to be a gadget queen. It was always about like what Polly said, the hands and skills of the surgeon. But here is, I'm using four different gadgets uh, in, in, in patients. So my approach, and I didn't go into a lot of detail about this, is I, I do use the wall in every single patient, not only for lipedema, but for Durkheim's disease also. But I use the wall primarily to 
to mess and hydrosect and to put that fluid in under local anesthesia. Um, I think it's a fantastic tool for that. I, I then uh, employ VASER, and I now employ VASER for the past two years in almost all patients with lipedema and Durkheim's also. VASER is a, is, a, is a very good device ultrasonically to further release the fibrosis and emulsify the tissue. Um, that I then use a power assisted liposuction, which I think works very, very well mechanically um, to, to release. It's almost like a sonic air toothbrush, like I said. It mechanically releases things very well and breaks things up. I then pulled out an older machine of mine, which I sometimes use in lipedema, which is Smart Lipo, and began to use it in Durkham's. Um, and use the 1440 nanometer wavelength to, to specifically zap the lipomas after I've emulsified and removed a lot of the fat. And, and many times I'll mark those areas lipomas and use a laser specifically to, to, to thermally zap those areas. And finally, I'll go back with PALF again to further extract um, and to clean things up. And, and you know, many times in, in, in medicine, we think intuitively, and I think definitely in, surgical, in surgery, um, it's a lot about intuition. And intuitively, this just makes sense to me. This is a little slide about, about the way in which VASER works. VASER is using ultrasonic energy to, to cavitate. It's taking the tumescent fluid and creating lots of air bubbles. And those air bubbles are pushing the fat apart and helping to break up the fat and also release a lot of the fibrosis. Another, another slide about how the cavitation uh, works. And another slide demonstrating that, that laser is, a VASER is very good for emulsifying the layer of fat. Um, I, think, I think it not only helps with uh, the, the complete extraction of lipidemia fat, but also helps protect that skin and creating oily layers so the skin retracts very evenly. Um, this is a slide that shows the difference between VASER and laser. This is actually from the VASER company touting how VASER is um, using lower energies. And that's true. It's not using the high energies of laser, like smart light, but it's much lower energy settings it's using. But in, 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 in the problem is it doesn't really reach high enough temperatures to really treat the very fibrotic areas, like the fibrotic nodules of Durkham's. And I find the laser, specifically in those areas, is better for the nodules of Durkham's. The results, I don't really have any great data on this. First of all, I had not enough time to pull things together. Maybe next year I'll give you some data on things. But I can tell you that the majority of patients I've treated with Durkheim's disease, or for Durkheim's, um, have had significant pain reduction. A minority have had not fantastic pain reduction. And there's one patient I, I did about in 2015 that apparently has increased pain now and it perplexes me, and it kind of brought up the thought in my mind, could it have been that I've removed some insulation by removing the fat around the nodules that made them more painful, or did her disease progress, or was something stimulated? So finally, a quote that I just made up, and I think this is basically, I believe in this, that liposuction is still currently the best chance for symptom reduction in Durkheim's disease with minimal risk. I feel that way with lipedema too, quite honestly. But, but to qualify this, I gotta tell you that, like with lipedema, it absolutely is a multi-system approach. It's not any one particular thing. There are many other factors that play into the approach um, uh, in many different areas, from nutrition to medications many times for the person to get the best result. These are some websites that I have that have more information. Uh, finally, um, those that know me uh, well know I like challenges, and, and this is uh, one challenge that I'm particularly proud of. This is uh, myself with my family uh, and four young children, Jessica's in the back there, in Cabo San Lucas for a week, last week with no nanny. So I'm very proud of this challenge. Anyway, thank you.